You go first. <laughs> Hi, my name is Moore. I'm a product manager for Turbonomic. Been with the company for about seven years, and I lead our cloud development today. And uh, my name is Eric Wright. I'm the technology evangelist for Turbonomic, and uh, today we're going to talk a little bit about something very cool that just launched. Yes. So um, we've gone before and, and showed you what it is that we do for hybrid cloud and multi-cloud environments, uh, but. Someone asked before, what do we do for S3, for example? But S3 is just one example. What we do uh, with our 5.9 um, just released functionality is we give you visibility into all the different services that you use and how much it is that you pay for them. Um, and again, on, uh, as, as much of detail as you um, have in your environment. Let's look at, at what happened over the past week. So you can see that um, both in a stacked and single service manner, whether you looked at, at the stacked bar chart right here, shows you how much it is that you spend. And again, this is an environment connected to both AWS, Azure, and on-prem. So it has mixed services, and we can scope those down and change those to fit whatever it is that you want to look into right now. How much it is that you're paying at each point in time for each of those services, right? And then aggregated, stacked, and then looking at how that is going to change with time. Now, the longer we run in your environment, the more accurate those predictions are going to be. Um, that's a quick view. Another very, very, very exciting thing for me is our new migration to public cloud capability. You'll have a list of all your clusters and different groups and entities. You can either go by cluster, by entity, or by individual groups. Let's just select those two right here. Click Next. Now we have a few options. Right? As I said, we have AWS and Azure connected to this environment. You can say, let's see what happens if I migrate to all of them. Right? And then we'll pick, the for each workload, the best provider for the best price. Or you can say, you know, I just want to go right now with AWS or Azure. You can also run separate ones to say, which should I pick, really? Right? If you're in a POC process, thinking, which cloud should I go with? You can run one plan on this, one on that, and see where it gets you. Or we can pick individual regions. As we mentioned before, certain customers for certain reasons would want to only go with one region. Or custom groups. So you can say, again, all the regions in the East Coast, all the regions across AWS and Azure, but just on the East Coast, just in the US, think of data sovereignty, especially for our European customers. Shout out East Side versus West Side. That's how we <laughs> <Right. laughs> um, Let's just pick one region for this example. So you know what, let's just pick AWS. Click Migrate to Public Cloud and wait. Um, it takes about two to three minutes for this plan to finish, but because you're nice and I don't want you to wait, um, we have a migration that already ran. We did the old Martha Stewart trick on this one just to make sure. Oh, let's, let's look at this one running. In, in yes, I am. <laughs> so again, the, I think the core thing about this is, in and of itself is interesting, but remember the engine that's driving these decisions is the same one that's assuring performance in your environment today. So when we make these decisions around when to migrate and what to migrate, it's not only, you know, what do I believe it is based on adding a certain amount of headroom and just doing the closest t-shirt size templating to what it is out there, but it's not, not taking what you are today of like, this VM is this big, what if you were to resize before you were to migrate it, right? And, and these are decisions that we're making through the portions of these plans. And you could then also twist and change those as needed. What if I were to go you know, straight up? What if I were to go region to region? What if I were to go resize first? There's lots of different iterations you can run, but making sure that we have the complete intelligence of our engine that's actually driving those changes and running the migration plan for you, which is great. And um, so actually, our plan finished running. As I said, it doesn't take that long. Um, so this original plan we ran, and these are the results. At a high level, what you'll see here is if you use Turbonomic to run that migration, it'll help you. Oh, what did I do? Click on something. OK. Uh, if you use Turbonomic to move these VMs, this is how much you're going to pay for the added cloud compute cost. What I've selected, this is how much it would cost me. Very simple, right? But if you look at that in the context of everything you already have, you really want to understand how much am I going to pay after I move all of this, right? If you continue to use Turbonomic to manage your environment, this is how much you're going to pay monthly, and this is how much you're going to pay yearly. Very simple, 
right? The answers that you were looking for as you were running that migration, right? Overview, can I actually afford this? What does that mean for my environment? We also compare it for an, an allocation-based plan versus a demand-based plan. If I keep the current allocation of VMs in my environment, compare it to whether I really size um, the workloads based on demand. So let's go over this table here, right? So first of all, what does Turbonomic do? Performance and efficiency, right? So first and foremost, how do we improve efficiency on that environment? If you continue the current allocation, you're actually going to have three undersized VMs in your environment, right? Um, and, and with Turbonomic ba demand based, we of course fix that. Oversized VMs, you currently have 45 out of the 140 that we have across, again, that entire environment. And none of them are going to be uh, oversized with Turbonomic. And then we talk about efficiency, right? So the average VM cost, again, across that entire environment, with and without Turbo, again, we can drive that to about $18.72 uh, $18 less a month um, if, you help, if you let Turbo drive that scaling decisions. And again, what can you do with the existing cloud compute the added cloud compute, aggregate that to what your monthly spend after the migration is going to be, and then help you assess based on that what your yearly budget needs to be according to that. We also track for you how much it is that you paid historically for cloud and then project that after the migration with and without Turbonomic, how much that's going to be. But most importantly, if we do all of that and don't tell you how to get there, it's like we've done nothing. So to give you an overview of the types of templates that you will need in your environment and then if you click here, a really detailed view into for each workload, which template it is that you need to use and how much it's going to cost you. For those workloads already in the cloud, we show you the difference from what you're paying today. Right? So if you execute that action, this is going to be the difference in cost. Sorry, this is a little bit out of screen. Um, but most importantly, and you know, when, when I talk to customers about my cloud migration, processes and, and strategies, a lot of people forget that, you know, you, everyone, it's, it's the hot thing, right? You said jazz hands about cloud, right? It's the hot thing. Everyone's thinking about it. How can I use cloud more? A new CIO comes in is like, oh, we need more cloud. We need more cloud. And then they think automatically, oh, we're going to move 10% of our workload to the cloud and then we can retire 10% of our hardware. No, right? I mean, unless you put a lot of thought into it to how to repackage your on-premises environment. <laughs> um, Good save. <laughs> uh, you're on, uh, you taught me well, Eric. You did taught me well. Um, so un unless you continue, continuously think of how you manage your on-premises environment to consolidate that as you migrate, right, then you can't make the right decision. So. What do we do? Right here at the bottom, we show you how much it is that you can retire. Um, in this case, we probably have a lot of unpowered uh, off VMs, and we can't actually retire anything. But we'll show you, um, as we run the plan, how many hosts you can retire, how many storages you can retire, and then how much money you're going to save by doing that. It becomes a real comparator because then you can say, am I really decommissioning? Am I really saving? And Especially as we know, everybody that's saying we're moving to a cloud first, uh, you know, strategy for everything. And then 18 months later, like, how's that cloud first thing going? Like, yeah, we're, 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 we got a couple of VMs that we retired. We're, we're pretty proud of that. Like, we all go into it with big eyes, like a nice giant buffet. And then three plates <laughs> in, we regret everything we had as we started making those early decisions. That's amazing. Yeah, a buffet sounds awesome. That's <laughs> right. <laughs> I'm going to make nothing but food references now for yeah. the next five minutes. <laughs> so, you know, that's... Uh, Can you hold right here or go right back to where you were? Sorry, quick question. Yes. Can you go down to where uh, you had highlighted, like, the different services and the cost? Yes. On the pretty lines? Oh, right, yes. That's what you meant? Yeah, highlight one of those if you don't mind, where it listed. Yeah, so I see a couple of things in there, like KMS service... Uh, VPC. So you're not just tracking things that tie to an EC2 instance. You're tracking like other services as well, like Correct. the way RDS I look at services, it, all that sort of thing. Yeah, the way I look at it is top down cost management versus bottom up. Mm -hmm. This is top down. We go into the bill and we look at everything you use and give you visibility into that, 
right? And then we also look at the VMs and the cost associated with those, and those are represented in, in where we saw the cost per yeah. VM. Yeah, no, I just, I just happened to notice that and thought that was really good because I expected you just to show yeah. here's what your instances cost, they're connected you know, to some block storage, that's what that costs, maybe some S3, mm -hmm. but that's pretty all-inclusive, so I thought that was interesting. That just looks at everything you're paying for. Okay. Right, and then... Um, it's That's probably good. the first time that we, if you look at, we talk about, we only show you information that we can proactively affect, and this is actually the first time we've realized that that's not, that wasn't the right approach. We need to see everything, and then we still, within that, show you which right. you can affect, and then obviously a bit of a hint to, you know, continuing growth that we're making in this area where we can then start to proactively affect other services well, right like I mean you could totally extend this into optimizing storage services on a cloud you know do you really need s3 do you need s3 IA can you move something to glacier what would that look like on a, from a cost perspective exactly yeah right so that is turbonomic 5.9 and uh, we're pretty proud of this and it's definitely it's this is for a small release this is a pretty big small release and most importantly, you know, and as Jason, thank you very much, pointed out, like this is the start of something that's pretty cool, and we definitely see a huge future, and not shedding what we're, what our roots are, you know, not just being able to do things only in the cloud, but being able to bridge this story and bring our customers through that journey, and it's really, really cool. So we're very proud, and we're very proud to be able to share this with the Tech Field Day folks, and obviously when, when people online see this, you know, during our, our release day, this is... This is pretty cool. So thank you very much, everybody. And uh, you know, we will see you again at another Tech Field Day event very soon.